Hello everyone, and we are in the final match of a Caledex draft. We're up 2-0, and oh, and I think this hand's a keep, especially on the draw. We have a bunch of cards we can play, and my chat just went away, but whatever. Um, we have all of our two drops uh, and, a, and a kill spell for early, and they all work well together too because they all care about energy. They're like our only three cards that care about it, so we're kind of lucky there. We also have one of the more powerful cards in our deck in our Fleet Wheel Cruiser, uh, and we got a third land, so... Which Thriving Dew do I play first? Depends what my opponent does, really. There are situations where I prefer one over the other. In this situation, I just cast Die Young. So, <laughs> because Long Tusk Cub is way too good. Uh, so we don't play either of them. Um, Long Tusk Cub is the kind of creature that if you don't kill it early, will just eventually run you over and kill you. So... So we put a stop to that. Thriving Rhino is like a, a slightly worse version of that. Uh, we're going to play our Gremlins because in the event our opponent like doesn't play a dude this turn, we can just do a bunch of damage with our Fleet Will Cruiser next turn and then follow it up by playing these two dudes. We're not blocking Thriving Rhino, I can tell you that. And I'm also very glad I used Die Young because he would have even more stuff available for his Long Tusk Cub. But we're just going to take three. Does he play a worthy blocker? Unfortunately, he does. So, hmm. Hmm. Well, now I probably just play Oval Chase since it can trade with either of them, and then I can get it back when I play Fleet Wheel Cruiser. So, yeah, we're going to do that. We will do that. And honestly, I probably trade with the Rhino first because... It can get bigger. If he has uh, more energy, then obviously I block Pima Outrider, but... But yeah, opponent's deck very good. Like these three green cards are all like super powerful. Ooh, that die young, that die young hurts my soul. Okay, yeah, that's bad. Mm. Yeah, being able to trade there was pretty key in our ability to uh, continue to be competitive in this game. And now I think we're just gonna take seven and go to ten. I think that's what we have to do. Ugh, another creature. Why you got to do that? Um, do we play Fleet Wheel Cruiser? If we do, we're just going to end up having a block, and that kind of feels worthless. But these can't block very well either. So the Cruiser at least gets back Oval Chase Daredevil. And then the Fleet Wheel Cruiser can just trade with one of them. So there are worse things in the world. So I guess we play our Fleet Wheel Cruiser here and... Normally, so far with this deck, when we've been playing Fleet Wheel Cruiser, we've been um, we've been smashing, you know, uh, with it. But we're not going to this time. I don't think we can really afford to. We could attack for nine here, of course, but we take nine on the backswing, and we're way behind in this race. So I think it's better to just try to grind out some trades with our Daredevil, uh, which involves us drawing some more artifacts. We do have one card that can get this back from our graveyard, so maybe we'll draw that. So, yeah. I definitely use the cruiser to block... Well, definitely is a strong word. I think I use it to block the rhino again, just because when my opponent gets energy, that'll mean my daredevil can't trade with it. Pima Outrider is more likely for me to be able to consistently trade with. So... I think that's our plan here. Pyro Helix is worth, or a second Die Young at least, is worth thinking about bringing in when you see Long Tusk Cub, since being able to kill that on turn two if my opponent plays it on turn two is pretty crucial. But, you know, we're getting smashed anyway, so <laughs> maybe it's not that crucial. Um, but, yeah, we're going to go ahead and crew our cruiser. And yeah, block the Rhino, go to four. Our opponent has a trick or something. We're really in trouble. I mean, we're already in trouble. Let's be real. But we can at least play Daredevil and a Grubs here. Ooh, that's not a lot of fun for me. Okay. I think I probably do play the Grubs. Um, although, honestly, the Rats probably trade just as well. I wonder what card he just stole from us. Okay. Well, definitely play our Daredevil again. 
Um, I guess I'm going to play the grubs. Get some energy and end our turn. Our opponent's deck is very good. Um, just in terms of the power of his cards. Definitely beating us at least on the power of cards we got in this game, but maybe in general. Green is just really strong. Like these these two commons are outrageous compared to what one usually expects at the common rarity. Ooh, he got our unlicensed disintegration, which drops us to one. <laughs> yeah, we're dead because the trample will kill us. So <laughs> that's that's not cool. Okay, so yeah, we can think about bringing in more of this. The problem is, like with Pyrohelix and Dai Young, I guess that our opponent has big creatures too. It might be able to be better to bring in the Pyrohelix because we know he also has the Cobra, and that makes this a little bit better. So yeah, it's probably better than Dai Young. And we can do the usual thing of cutting out Fortuitous Find. Um, yeah, I think that's fine roll with it but yeah we got stomped there Ooh, ugly hand in terms of the lack of lands really yeah i guess we'll keep this one i don't love it but that makes it a lot better we're on the play too so those grubs may do some work though our opponent's deck is clearly also quite aggressive so no guarantees no guarantees I'm sure he has a two drop, right? Yeah. The thriving rats. Um, all right, well, we're gonna attack and use the energy to make him a three, two. So we do have a nice aggressive start here that will allow us to play Spire Side Infiltrator and then Fleet Wheel Cruiser. So we can just smash for a lot of early damage here. Um, Especially if our opponent, like, plays a creature we're not especially concerned about. Basically anything that... He's probably going to attack here, too, which is even better for us. Oh, no, come on. Yeah, there you go. That's what I wanted to see. We wanted to see an attack. If he leaves his man up, it may mean he has, like, appetite for the unnatural, which would break my heart a little. Okay, Thriving Rhino. We're okay with that. All our cards can trade with it. Um, and it can't kill my Fleet Wheel Cruiser. So I feel good about that on all fronts. And we have a tidy conclusion for later. So hello. And Fleet Wheel Cruiser is ready to roll. Everyone attacks. Goes to 16 from that trigger. We unfortunately don't have any energy. Yeah, he's just going to take it all. We like that like that a lot because now that means we can attack with cruiser he can declare a block and we can just use tidy conclusion to clear the way um depending i mean chances are he's gonna like double block the thing we can also just start crewing with spire side infiltrator to do damage something we've used i think in a previous match uh the one downside about leagues I do like them for the most part, but the one downside about recording with them is I don't remember as vividly what happened in the previous match, but I do recall Spireside Infiltrator in the late game pinging my opponent down for the last couple damage. But yeah, we'll take three here. In the face. Yeah. Okay. Well, Appetite for the Natural does seem decently likely given what our opponent just chose to do. That said, I think we play our land and we crew it with this guy, mostly because we're more interested in keeping him alive. Our opponent may use Appetite here. Um, and then we're going to attack with both our creatures, and we have Tidy Conclusion ready to go. He may have a trick. If it's a trick, we're in a lot less danger, I think. Um, if it's something other, if it's just a straight up removal spell, then we're kind of in trouble, but still in decent ish shape, despite the number of cards our opponent has in their hand. We do have to stop drawing lands. Damn it, it is appetite for the unnatural. All right. Let's see how it is. So, 
up to six he goes. Do I use tidy conclusion here to just drop him to three? Hmm, no, I don't think so. You just trade. Yeah. Maybe I should have. But we're not going to. We need to draw some action here. Our poor Fleetwheel Cruiser just got owned both times. At least that time it, sm it smashed in for five, but... Wouldn't mind drawing one of our other vehicles. We're just crewing our way to victory. It is nice. One of our cards is a removal spell, though. All right. Hmm. Tidy conclusion. Does it happen? Do I do it? I think I do it. Let's just do it. All right, that's good. We'll drop our opponent to two here. And then we have a creature with menace. We're going to hold on to the card in our hand. At worst, he's probably not going to be able to attack us anymore. So we have time to find one of our two pyrohelices to kill him. Or a way to tap our infiltrator, which I guess means crewing. Okay. That's pretty good for our opponent. So now he can attack us, obviously. Without fear. That will drop us to nine. May even have another card. Just give me a pyro helix. Get me out of this. Get me out of this pyro helix. Hmm, not what I needed there. Right. Well, we're going to end our turn. Looks like we may have lost our opportunity, thanks to our opponent's nature's way. We still have Pyro Helix, but not a huge chance of drawing it. Um, do we have anything else that helps us big time here? I don't really think we do. All right. Let me go to... Seven. I guess our vehicle can go a long way. I know that you don't hurt, but you also don't help a whole lot. Yeah. I mean, obviously, I trade the Daredevil. For long test cub or thriving rhino and what i wouldn't give for a way to tap down my spire side infiltrator right now okay pyro helix come on <laughs> so i did a second one for a reason Ooh, we're in trouble so if he plays an artifact we're just dead next turn oh Awful. Okay. Well, he's going to force us into a situation where we have to block both of these. Uh, and that's if he doesn't have an artifact. If he has an artifact, we're just dead. And then if we have to block both of these, only our Pyro Helix saves us, if I'm remembering my deck correctly. Um, I guess I could be an aggressor here. But all he has to do... Well, no, he has to block both of them, doesn't he? Does that put me in a better position? No. Because he could just block, yeah, he could just block uh, this, yeah, so no, it does not. Well, that's okay. This deck was, this deck was pretty solid. I think it kind of overachieved. I didn't expect it to go make it to the finals 2-0 and necessarily. I did expect it to go 2-1 and though, more or less, and that's where we ended up. We just started off hot. We still have a chance. If he's an artifact, we're dead. If he doesn't, we still have the Pyro Helix off the top of the deck to try to save us. I guess he could also have any trick to kill us here. Come on, Pyro Helix. <laughs> Please. 
That three life he gained off Appetite for the Unnatural is big. It's big right now. It's three, right? Or is it just two? No, it's only two. Jeez. <laughs> it's really big. Opponent would be exactly dead. What's happening right now? Ooh. Okay. Well, our opponent has this freaking thing, so <laughs> that's a scary thing. Uh, we still have Pyro Helix off the top of our deck to try to save us, but that's it. I don't think we have any other way to save ourselves. Do we have another direct damage spell? We don't have like a spell, a spell knot. No, I don't think we do. I think we're, I think we are in need of Chandra's Pyro Helix here to make this keep going. I haven't gotten to draft one of these or play against one of these yet, and it's actually pretty irrelevant here, interestingly enough. Um, I mean, I mean, obviously it's a very powerful card, but I was dead anyway. So, oh, no Pyro Helix. All right. Thanks for coming to my need when I needed you, second Pyro Helix. Well, we went 2-1. and one. That's pretty solid finish. Thanks for watching, and don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe.